Hey everyone, this is Matt Perez, and welcome to episode 8 in our Scan to 3D part design series. Now, we left off last time after we created our guided surfaces based on our mesh. Now, what I've done here is I've taken that guided surface that we created, and I simply mirrored it across a plane because I knew the dimension between this side and this side, and then I simply filled in the center just for visualization purposes. Now what we're looking at is actually the back lower section of a car bumper. And what we need to do is we need to design a part that is gonna hold a camera in one of these little diffuser pockets. Now this is gonna be maybe a, some sort of demo camera to show the back view you know, for some sort of functionality, whatever, whatever the case may be. We need to design a quick housing, it's basically a one-off, that will attach this camera, hold it in this orientation within this pocket right here. So we need to decide a few things. First off, we need to decide, do we want the part just to be functional? Do we need it to be aesthetic? Are we trying to hide any of this information? Or a lot of these other factors that come into play. Our main goal here is functional. We wanna make sure that we can physically hold the camera and that while we're physically holding the camera, we can attach to this geometry around us. If we needed to make a very aesthetic housing, then that would be secondary on our list after being able to actually physically hold this camera in place. So we're gonna start this basic series by taking a look at how we can start designing our solids that are gonna hold the camera and attach to our surface. Now, whenever you're dealing with surfaces that have been created based on a mesh, one of the hardest problems is alignment within the origin. So we have our standard planes here, and you can see our right plane is cutting through this surface, but it's not in the middle of it. And our top plane is below it, and the front plane is in front of it. And this is often the case. Now, when you start designing your parts from scratch, you're going to be basing them around the origin. You're going to use the origin and all the standard front, top, and right planes to really simplify the modeling process. So you can mirror things. You can use symmetry to your advantage whenever you possibly can. You can extrude things mid-plane and so on. Now, we don't have that luxury with these surfaces because really there's nothing symmetric about them. Everything is based on a scan, which the scan is not going to be perfect. Even if you have a symmetric part and you use a mirror plane within the mesh creation wizard, you're still going to have some issues here. So what I've done is I've inserted the camera, and I've done this using insert, part and I've inserted a separate part file. So now I have essentially a multi-body part. We're dealing with one surface and one solid, but I've added a secondary part to this file. There are some great options when we do this. If we go to insert part and we go ahead and we add this camera again, another instance of this camera, you'll notice that we have options to transfer quite a bit of things here. We can transfer surface and solid bodies, any axes that are located within that part file, planes, in this case, cosmetic threads don't apply, but you can insert that information, absorbed and unabsorbed sketches, coordinate system, model dimensions, and any whole wizard data. Then you also have the available option to locate part with move copy feature. Now, when I inserted this red camera on the right side, I used the locate part with move copy feature. In this case, in this instance, I'm not going to do that. What I'm gonna do is insert it a different way and show you the differences here. So I'm going to place it close to the same orientation. And what I need to do now is bring that thing all the way up here. So you'll notice that it's quite far back from our actual part. So what I want to do is go to my move copy bodies and I'm going to move this thing quite a bit. So let's just go ahead and say negative 50 and see where that places us. So you can see we're there, and if we zoom this thing all the way out, our surface is still quite a ways off. So let's do negative 250, still not even close. Negative 800 gets us a little bit closer, and we can zoom in, and we can start manually getting this thing closer. So you can see as we drag it, we can get it pretty close to the orientation, and you'll notice that it's actually backwards, and that's something that we have to fix in another instance. So then let's rotate this thing around and for all intents and purposes, that's gonna be pretty close, so I'm gonna say okay. So now we've located the camera within this pocket, and one thing you'll notice if we expand camera two and we take a look at the planes, we take a look at these sketches, these sketches are actually located way back here where the original part was inserted. So that means all my planes, all my sketches are almost a thousand inches back away from the part. So this is something that can very easily happen when you start inserting these parts. 
Now, if I remove this operation and I remove that second instance of the camera and we take a look instead at the one that I inserted previously, if we expand this, we take a look at the sketches, they're all located where the part is. And that's because I use the insert part using the locate option and I, I use my move copy body within that insert operation. So that was all done in the same time, which means that the planes, the sketches, any of those additional features that you've opted to bring in with this part will stay with this part. Now I do have a secondary move copy body and that was simply to rotate it so the cable was exiting in the right orientation. And because all I did was rotate this 180 degrees, my sketches didn't rotate, but the important information here is still there, such as the center line. So if we need to add any additional planes, we have some reference geometry here. The good thing about this is the planes are still with us as well. So I have the front plane, I have the right plane, which was basically bisecting or it's going right down the middle of this camera body. So I have all the great information that I need in order to create the geometry based off this. If we zoom in, we have some flat faces located within this cut. I have the flat face on the front of the camera and the back. All this information is here so we can start designing our geometry. The first thing I want to do is actually start a sketch on the end of the camera, essentially the lens. So what we can do is we can use this face and we can start adding geometry. So I'm simply going to draw a little bit larger circle. I'm going to give it some dimensions. In this case, we're going to say half inch. So what this is going to be is the external edge of whatever part, plastic part that we 3D print. So now that we have this geometry here, we can go ahead and we can do a few things. We can simply use convert entities and bring in the outside edge of the, uh, the current camera body. So now they have the inside and the outside edge. So this information is great, but we still need to make sure that it goes up and it intersects the rest of our surfaces. So we can draw some more geometry. Now we have to keep in mind that this is going to be a 3D printed part, so we don't necessarily have to follow all those standard manufacturing processes and, and design criteria that we would need for, say, an injection molded part. Injection molded parts are very specific. You need to have a consistent wall thickness. You need to follow a bunch of rules for internal walls and ribs in terms of their size in relation to the external walls and all these different things that you need to make sure that you meet. When we're de designing for 3D printed plastic parts, we really don't have those restrictions. We can design parts that in reality cannot be injection molded, cannot be manufactured in any other means. Areas like pockets inside of parts where you really cannot get in there and do a side pull or cavity or even a machining operation. So it gives us a lot of freedom, especially when we're designing parts like this where it's fairly complicated in terms of the geometry, the surrounding geometry, and maybe how we need to physically attach to this part. So I'm going to start by taking this sketch and I'm going to just add some lines to it. I'm going to add some, some arcs that go up and over to the side. So I'm going to start at the side position and I'm just going to draw these up into space. And I want to make sure that I add a tangency here. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to grab the side point and again just drag it up in space and make sure that I have some sort of tangency here. Now I want to make sure that both of these are equal. And you can add any dimensions you want. For instance, if we want to add an arc length to this, we can grab the start and end point and then actually add an arc length by grabbing the third dimension there. We can also add the internal radius if we want to make sure that that's one. And you can see this one doesn't have an arc length currently applied to it, but we can do the same thing as well. Start and end point and then grab the arc itself and say 1.5. So now we can go back and we can trim away some of this information that we don't need. And then we want to finish off this geometry because we are dealing with solid geometry here. I want to go ahead and finish that off. All right, so now we have a closed profile. We can take this and we can extrude it. Now I want to extrude it backwards and really the amount that you extrude it, it doesn't necessarily have to be the full amount, but you can do it as much as you feel you need to in order to hold this geometry. 
Now, one thing that we wanna consider is how we're actually going to retain this. Now, if you were doing this with a manufacturing process, you might go back and add a set screw in there as an additional operation, but because we are using 3D printing technology, we have some good options and different ways that we can manufacture this. We don't have to add a taper or a draft to this inside wall. We can still just do simple part as if you were machining it. And then we can also add some snap latch geometry in here to help retain the part. So what I'm gonna do, just for the purposes of this demo is, I'm gonna extrude this one and a half inches, which is essentially the entire length of this camera. And then we're gonna add some additional features in the center that'll help us locate the part. We wanna deselect merge results. We don't wanna add this to the camera. So we're gonna say okay. And now that we have this geometry here, you can see we have the intersection between our solid body here and the surfaces around it. So at this point, we have several different things we can do. We can shell this entire part, or we can go back and we can use this surface to cut it. And for the start of this, I wanna go ahead and use cut with surface. I'm gonna grab this surface, and I wanna grab a single selected body. Now we need to zoom out, we need to make sure that arrow is going the appropriate direction. And we say okay. So now what we've done is we've removed all that additional solid material, and if we hide the surface, you can see that we have a good match for the corresponding geometry. Now, one thing we have to be careful with, especially designing a part like this where its reference is very important, we need to make sure that the geometry that we're matching is enough to physically locate this part. Now, it's very easy to add double-sided tape to this and just stick it on here, but it, you could also rotate it a couple degrees. You could get this thing pretty far off of the geometry. So we're going to have to give some thought to the best way to locate, physically locate this part. Whether that means that we need to add a pin and actually drill a hole into the bumper, or if we need to just add some more plastic material out here to make sure that we are not producing a, a condition where we can't physically locate this part. If you guys have any questions, please email solidworksupport at mlc-cad.com, and we'll see you next time.